Hey guys, all right, so welcome to the Shepherd's Rest. These are gonna be quick, well, I should say quicker, little snippets as we go through the book of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It's gonna be a long study, but a great one. Again, this is going to be geared towards those who maybe don't know the word at all, especially the Old Testament, so that we can walk through it and catch some some really good um, nuggets. If you would like, there are notes that I have for this that will eventually be put together. But right now, um, you can go by chapter. We're going to be talking about chapter one right now. If you would like a copy of those, feel free to email me at the shepherd's rest doc talk dot. I mean, excuse me, at gmail.com. Again, that's the shepherd's rest doc talk at gmail.com. And for you guys, Shepherds is spelled S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D-S, Shepherds. Okay, so let's move into um, Genesis. I will talk a lot about the Hebrew language, just throwing little nuggets out there for you. And the goal is to, obviously, we could talk forever on these things, but we want to be able to go through smaller, just little snippets to be able to get I guess, introducing us to it so that we'll have a better understanding. All right, so Genesis 1, uh, the Hebrew name is Bereshit. Uh, Bereshit means in the beginning. So I want to just the very beginning, where it has in the beginning, in the Bibles, the very t first letter is a very large, uh, in the Hebrew letter called uh, Beit letter. What's cool about that is that Beit letter is large, which means house. It can mean a home or a house. Well, think about this. In the beginning, the very goal, the whole Bible is about how the Lord wants to build a house to dwell with us. And the very end in Revelation is what? The very end is how he builds a house. It's the new Jerusalem comes down in Revelation 21. That's the house. The Garden of Eden was to be a house to live. He does. He lives with Adam. He dwells with Adam there. And then it gets messed up, right? Because, man, we, we, we're not so smart sometimes. But then it's okay because in the end, Messiah comes, Jesus comes, and he will return. And upon his return, and then at the end of that, we end up in a house with them. We actually will get to dwell, just like Adam dwelled with him, in New Jerusalem. So, I love it because it really is a full circle. And we'll find the patterns in Hebrew. Everything is a full circle. So he starts with, I'm going to build you a house. And he ends with, I built you a house. All right? How cool is that? In the New Testament, I think it's in John, where Jesus says, you can't go where I'm going. I'm going to build you a house. Well, yeah, he really was. Isn't that cool? It was not an afterthought. It was from the very beginning. It was the plan. Okay, so in the beginning, um, Elohim created the heavens and earth. Now, I want to say, my Bible has Elohim, Yahweh. It shows the, the different um, wording for God. That's very important. Elohim is a title. It's a title of creator and power, sometimes considered judge. So, when I read, I'll read with these, um, so we'll know what's being said. Because in chapter 1, it's all Elohim. It's all the creator and the judge. We don't see the merciful one until after man is introduced. Really good thing to pay attention to. So, um, notice that in the beginning, duh, God created, right? Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Okay, and then all of a sudden it's form and without void in chapter 2, uh, verse 2. And then there starts this creation again. That's very important because the word used for created is Baruch. I'm not saying it correctly. I apologize. My Hebrew pronunciation is atrocious. So I'm sorry for anyone listening who knows Hebrew. Don't laugh too hard. Just please, please bear with me. So, um, and that means to be formed from nothing. So where people go, the Big Bang Theory. Okay, you know what? If God wanted to use the Big Bang Theory, but he was involved he spoke it. So if a Big Bang Theory happened, here's how it happened. By God saying, and his words created out of nothing to create something. Because he is the creator of all things. So his words, his words are what actually produced it. Petting the cat right now. If, if you can see me 
on my YouTube channel or on the YouTube channel. I'm petting the cat. I apologize for the distraction. All right. So, um, it is very much thought that by, by some that between Genesis 1 1 and Genesis 1 2 that we have a whole lot of things going on. There's there's a very large time time span, though time as we know it was not yet did not yet exist. You know, the Bible in the beginning there's eternity and then there's man and then there's eternity after New Jerusalem, right? After the new heaven and new earth. So it's kind of like it's sandwiched in. What we live in is a sandwiched in between two eternities, all right? So in that first eternity, we had stuff going on. And I know it's like, well, how can you have an eternity that ends? I don't know. It's just the best way to describe it. So Satan falls. Satan's like, you know what? No, I got this. You have a created being telling an uncreated being, the creator, I got this. And that's basically what takes place. One of the reasons why um, this is thought is because in Job 38, he sa uh, it says that the angels rejoiced when they saw the heavens and the earth created, when they saw it being created. Well, if nothing's created until Genesis 1-1, where do the angels come from? Where are the sons of God seeing all this? It's because it's created from nothing. However, in Genesis 1-7, the word there is used Asha, I think it's A-S-A-H. I'm not saying it right. But it means to reshape or form, to model. Like you take substance that's there and then you use that substance. So you're creating from what's already created. You're forming it. So the Genesis 1-1, in the beginning he created. And then the recreation basically happens. So in verse 2 where it says the earth became formless and void. It became empty. But we know from Jeremiah 4, 23, he says, I don't create anything void. I don't create anything like that. He created everything with a purpose. He created that his words never come back void. So if the Lord says his words never come back void, if he says let there be light. If he says, create heaven and earth, it wasn't void. It was fully of life. It was created. So something happened that made it not like that. So when you look down at this darkness, this emptiness and this darkness that came upon the face of the earth, let's remember from Isaiah that the Lord says that he created light. He created darkness. He created good. He created evil. He literally is the creator of everything. And everything in the end will bring him glory, no matter what. So this darkness, this moves. You know, in the creation, you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all created. And again, if you're interested in looking at the Bible verses that go with this, please do email me at, again, the Shepherd's Rest Doc Talk at uh, gmail.com. Again, the shepherd dressed doc talk at gmail.com. Um, because I can send you, I will gladly email you a copy of the notes and you can look at everything in a much more um, broken down, uh, what I want to say, um, detail in, in much more detail with all the scriptures next to it. Um, so, so yeah, so verse two, we have this something's happened, there's this judgment. From what? So I'm going to just say I really believe it's a judgment from the fall. And that in in Satan's fall and him taking the angels with him, those who decide to follow, that they corrupted the earth. And the Lord's like, mm, not going to happen. So he just starts all over. And again, it's not like God didn't see what's happening. He knew everything. Remember, it says that before the foundation of the earth. Did you know before the foundation of the earth that it was already planned for Jesus to come and die on a cross and raise again to be resurrected? Isn't that amazing? Before this happens, he already said yes. You know, in the Bible it says the beginning of, or the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. Isn't that cool? Because if we will have the, the, the wherewithal, I guess you'd say, to really fear God, right, then we will have wisdom. It says that wisdom was around, sorry, it says that wisdom was around 
I'm laughing because I literally, my dog's snoring and I had to throw my hair clip and a pin to make her stop snoring. So I apologize for the laughing, but she's so loud when she sleeps. Anyway, completely digress, sorry. Um, what was I saying? I was saying, yes, about wisdom. So, you know, it says that wisdom in Proverbs, it says that wisdom created, yeah, wisdom created the heavens and wisdom created the earth. Now get this, think of this. If wisdom created the heavens and wisdom created the earth, and that was the first thing formed, right? And that was with God, right? Because the Holy Spirit and a part of the Lord, when he spoke those wisdom, that wisdom, but in James 2, it says that if we, will just ask for wisdom, he will give it to us. The Holy Spirit, he's gonna give us the Holy Spirit. The same wisdom that was used to create heaven and earth. Can you imagine? I mean, like, I can't even imagine. People who wanna say name it and claim it, or they wanna say their words upon the universe. Okay, how about the words that created the universe through the living God, through the Holy Spirit, with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? Though That wisdom we can ask for and have, to be honest, we have no excuse. We have no excuse because he says he will give us that wisdom freely as much as we ask. It's not limited. So if we will be the vessel that he's created us to be, not a vessel of wood, hay, and stubble, but a vessel of true gold, think of the wisdom that we could have in order to learn the word of God. It blows my mind. Absolutely blows my mind. So anyway, I guess um, let's let's look at one more thing, and then then we'll call this a call this a take. Uh, wrap it up. So, chapter uh, verse three talks about Elohim again, the Creator, the Judge. Right? It says, "Let light come to be, and light came to be." Verse four, and Elohim saw the light, and it was good. And Elohim separated the light from the darkness. Isn't that an interesting thought? He pulled the light out of the darkness. Let me ask you something. If you go out into sunshine, you see light, and this is just a duplicate of what's in the heavenlies. Can you separate, can you see darkness? No. You can't see darkness in light, but you can see light in darkness. So he literally, in the darkness that was among, among all on the, you know, on the earth, he pulled light out of it. What a thought. He pulled light light out of darkness, which tells you there's always some light there if we're willing to allow it to shine. It also tells you that in the darkness of the world today, if we'll allow the light to shine through us, how it can be seen. Just a little speck light. Think about it. If you're in a dark, dark room or you're in, if you've ever been in the ocean in the night and you see, God, the, the, stars, though little, how bright they are. That's, that's this. He's pulling his perfect light, not the star, his perfect light out of the darkness through his words. That is some powerful words. All right, we're going to end on that note. We're going to talk more about the perfect light, which is or when we come back for episode two, um, as we continue on with Genesis, aka Better Sheet. Y'all have a great day. I hope you enjoyed the nugget. Bye.